Theology is based on five sources. Look at the back wall. It's based on Scripture, reasoning, tradition, experience, and emotions. Now, I'm going to go through each source, and I'm going to explain how it contributes to a person's own personal theology. And we're going to start with the first source because it's the most important. In fact, the sources are listed in the order of their priority. In other words, the order of their importance, and we go from left to right. In other words, Scripture is the most important. Reason is the second most important. Tradition is the third most important. Experience is the fourth most important. And emotion is last. Now, some people don't care about the order. And their own personal theology is based on experience and emotion. What kind of life do you think those people have? You're right. They have a screwed up life. And they don't understand why you blast, but nothing they ever do is blessed. Well, honey, you don't know how life works. Because your own personal theology is screwed up. Yeah. This is the order of importance according to what God's Word says. But each one of these are sources for your own personal theology. Now, what do I mean by source? This is where your, your own personal theology comes from. All right? So we're going to start with the first source because it's the most important. We're going to start with Scripture. Because according to 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 and 17, it's the most important and it should always be a Christian's primary source. This is what you build your life on. This is how you build your personal theology. It must be built on Scripture. So let's take a look at 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 and 17. Here's what it says. All Scripture is inspired by God. Now, do you see that phrase, inspired by God? That phrase is translated from one Greek word, pheo Neustos, neustos, theonustos. Now, theonustos is a compound word, which simply means it's made up of more than one word. In this case, it's made up of two words. The word theos, which means what? God. Now, if you're Cherokee County, you've probably heard it theos all your life, right? It's theos. And then, what's interesting, it has the other word, neo. Not pneuma, neo. They're related, but what's neo? Neo is the Greek word for to breathe. But more importantly, to exhale, to blow. In fact, sometimes it's translated as wind or to blow. Now, when you combine these two words, it means God blowing or God exhaling. And you don't know what that means. In fact, some of uh, translations of the Bible, translate this as, all Scripture is God-breathed, which is actually a good translation, but it needs to go further. And let me explain why. The way that we form words, the way that we talk, is by exhaling. We can't speak by inhaling. In fact, I'm going to illustrate to you. I'm going to say a sentence, and here's the sentence. I think everyone should come to church. And I'm going to do it while I'm inhaling. All right? Now, you can go home and you can try this and see if I'm right. But I'm going to tell you, every, I think everyone should come to church. But I'm not going to exhale. I'm only going to in here. Here goes. <laughs> now, I'm going to say that exhaling. I think, inhale, because I need to for exhale, everyone should Come to church. Words are formed when we exhale. Theo, neo, means God breathe, but more importantly, God speaking to us. It really means God exhaling, but the thought is all Scripture is God speaking to us. Now, I want you to see this. 
it doesn't say some scripture, it says all scripture. So we believe in verbal, plenary inspiration. Plenary means all of the Bible is inspired, not some of it. We don't pick out the parts we don't like. I've met people that don't like what Paul wrote because it doesn't go along with their theology. <sighs> Honey, all Scripture is inspired, whether I like it or I don't like it. What is verbal inspiration? It means that God shows this word rather than this word. That's why we do word studies. That phrase inspired by God comes from a Greek word. I tell you what it means. God shows that word, that onustos, for a specific reason. So I want to know what that word is because he chose that word over another word. Yeah. Now let's go further. All Scripture is inspired by God. And it's useful. Here's its purpose. To teach us what is true and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. Well, he just makes me feel so bad when I come to church. Honey, I'm just reading the Bible. It corrects us when we're wrong. It teaches us to do what is right. God uses it to prepare and to equip his people to do every good work. Now, I want you to notice what Scripture is good for. It's good for teaching us what is true. What is truth, Pilate wanted to know? Jesus is truth. Let's go further. God's word is truth. What is true? God's word is truth. You want to base your life on truth? Base your life on the word of God. I promise you it's true. It points out what's wrong in our life. Then it corrects us when we're wrong and it teaches us to do what's right. Don't do this. Do this. And God uses it to equip us to do good works. Wow. I want you to think of it like this. The Word of God, Scripture, is God tutoring us, coaching us, mentoring us. From time to time, I have people come to me, they are even write me, and they say, Pastor, I'd like you to mentor me. And I write back and say, well, I'm honored. Thank you but I'm not qualified. In fact, you're already being mentored. I am. I said, yes. The Word of God is mentoring you. All Scripture is God speaking to us, is teaching us, is coaching us. He's mentoring us. Now, if I study the Scriptures and I allow it to do its purpose, it will prepare me to stand before God on Judgment Day and be rewarded. It will shape my worldview in such a way that it causes me to live a life that's pleasing to Him, a life that has eternal value. 